okay, maybe I am just haunted by thousands of hours, not an exaggeration, of manually playing back a tape, an audio file of an interview I've done, typing out a few words, winding match, did I get them right or not, and then moving on one pixel at a time through what could be hours of interviews. Or maybe, I'm not scarred, maybe it's that automatic transcription is genuinely getting better and better. But, you know, which Scarring or better, whichever it is, this is the fifth time in three years that a 58 Keys edition has been all about transcription. And how, how can it not be? I mean, one example, today, right, today, I could hang up the phone from someone that I'm talking to about, you know, background details for a novel, the kind of little bits of reality they have. I can talk to them, chat away, and when I hang up, every word is already transcribed. Seriously, where has this been all my writing life? Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, which is ever, as always really, is for writers like you and me who use and who write on Macs and iPhones and iPads too. I do subscribe or support 58 Keys on Patreon because we have so much to talk about and then every word of it can be written up for us automatically, effortlessly. I'm about to be drooling, aren't I? Yeah, sorry about that. Calm down. Okay, bit excessive but real. I mean it. I mean, 30 years of interviewing, well, certainly hundreds, possibly into the thousands of people. And then, what, 27 of those years slogging through the tapes. I love interviewing, right? It's a privilege, right? As we get to interview people. About, actually, I have a book out about how to do interviews, you know, how to get them, what you can, what you can't do, when you should do that. Oh, and when it goes wrong as well. Yeah, didn't enjoy that bit quite so much. Um, yeah, and there was no joy ever in transcript. Well, no, okay, be fair. You did get a certain satisfaction when you reached the end of the hour-long interview. When you were finished, that was pretty good. But uh, oh, the book is The Blank Screen, interviewing uh, for authors and writers. I'll, I'll put a link down below. But I'm also going to put a link, much more urgently, I think, for an app that has just been updated and I mean, it's as I record this, it's six days at most since it was updated, but it's already instantly. It's gone into my toolbox of three apps that I use for everything now to do with transcription, actually, that I use all the time. And in fact, they're slightly different and they're each so good at certain things. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm interviewing more people now just because I can. It's just great. OK, calm, calm breath. To it. Let me show you, right, the, uh, first the newly updated app, and then I would like to suggest to you when it's what the other two are and when it's best to use each of these three for it. Subtle differences, and they are also changing, but right now I think they're really clearly useful in certain ways. Uh, that new app, by the way, well, I call it a new app. It's a new update to an incredibly old app, Audio Hijack. It must be in its third decade now but what it's always done it's always been absolutely superb at audio recording and now it's just slipped in optional automatic transcription audio hijack if you don't happen to already know and adore it it can record anything on your mac yeah plug in a microphone fine uh slot in a dvd if you remember those it can take the audio from that i mean if your life right would just not be complete without a ringtone made from Apple Mail's bleeps or Microsoft Word's error, I don't know. You need Audio Hijack and you always have needed it for this. But now there's this. Follow. Here is Audio Hijack set up to just record audio from Safari. It can be any app, anything on your Mac. But quite often when I'm making a podcast, for example, I'll play back some video on Safari and I will get Audio Hijack to record the clip that I want. And when I do that, I use exactly this. Now, you see the three blocks here. Audio Hijack works with these blocks. You drag them in and you rearrange them. In this case, three blocks, all alike in dignity. The first one is just saying, I would like to record audio from Safari, please. And then the middle one says, and I would like to save that audio as an MP3 file. And then the last one says, do you know I'd also like to hear all of this while it's going on? So Audio Hijack, in this case, is going to play out through my Mac's speakers. Well, it could be through the headphones. It could be Whatever I say could be nothing. Totally up to you. Fine. All these blocks, all these arrangements are fine. But now these three, right, 
they are just three of an enormous number of different blocks in Audio Hijack. They do different things that, I, honestly, I don't even understand. Half of them, maybe. And I do know that you can string together a lot more than three. You could record to MP3 and WAV format. You could send to this big or not, all sorts of things. But the latest of these blocks, the newest block of all of them all, is called Transcribe. Drag that into the row of other blocks. Now, it does have to come after the audio that you've chosen, the thing you've said, I want to listen to Safari, or, or it's got nothing to record. But otherwise, pop it in anywhere. Also, I should say, the very first time that you do this, you have to click on the transcribe block and tell it certain things. Uh, you've got to tell it where you want transcriptions to be saved on your Mac. Uh, plus, you also have to pick a language now. 99 different languages. Uh, I speak English, Australian and American, so, you know, multilingual here. 99, though, you'd think they'd find one more. Um, also, I, no, okay. Uh, there's also a choice you need to make here the first time out about the quality of the transcription. This is AI transcription yet again. Everything's AI now, but in this case, as ever, the choice is between a small and a bigger large language module. Since there's no cost, benefit, or advantage picking one or the other, I can't see. I don't know why they bother with the two. There's no earthly reason to do anything but choose the biggest one. It does take a little longer, fractionally longer, to download to your Mac the first time you use it. And I, you know, I imagine it must be a little slower to do its job, but I've not noticed that. What I have noticed is that now anything I ever record in Audio Hijack using these three blocks, well, it's also automatically transcribed for me. And frankly, most of the time I don't need a transcription, but so what? Let it do its doings. Uh, it won't subscribe songs. By the way, just as music kind of gives up on that one. But otherwise, you run it through this, it records everything, it transcribes everything. It just does it. And that actually, the things it can do can include phone calls. You've seen how your Mac can take a phone call. There you go. That comes into your iPhone. Well, actually, I've never answered it on the Mac once, I don't think. But Audio Hijack could record it if you did. And so it could therefore then automatically transcribe the course if you wanted. At the moment, I'm getting so many spam calls, it'd be a really dull transcription. As I say, I've not done that, but actually what I, well, I can and I sometimes have recorded Zoom calls, record the audio from a Zoom call, um, and at the end of it, there's a nice transcription ready for me. Uh, I should say, you know this, but I should say this, whenever you record someone live, like on a call, you have to tell them, but you know, you knew that. Audio hijack, right? It was already ridiculously useful for me, for 20 years I've been using this and now it's just even better. This version is, it's a paid app, but there's no extra fee for the transcription feature and also no limit on how many transcriptions you can do, how long those transcriptions are, do what you like. Audio Hijack for the Mac costs $77 if you've never bought it before or if you had an earlier version, as you know, obviously I did, it's $35. <laughs> $35 for all of this amazing stuff. Isn't it brilliant to get so excited about apps that help us as writers? Um, Audio Hijack, right, it, you know, at most a week old now in this version. It's already become a kind of general purpose uh, transcriber for me, and I suppose I could use it for anything. I tend to use it for everything, just let it do it, except I don't know how to do this in it. I don't know how to take an existing recording audio or video and have that transcribed for me. I do this a lot and for it I use Whisper Transcription. Last year, okay, OpenAI, the makers of ChatGPT, which I think you might possibly have come across, made an AI transcription service that they called Whisper. And then in March 2023, they opened it up to other developers. See what you can do with it. Audio Hijack uses it, actually, and so does this separate Whisper Transcription app for the Mac. So countless others. This Whisper thing by ChatGPT, it's the engine behind, well, these two and, and so many others. And since March, I think when it came out around then, this particular Whisper transaction app has been using the engine and getting better and better at using it. I think there's still a few rough edges where it doesn't seem to quite do what you'd expect. But as of several months ago now, Whisper transcription is my go-to choice for everything. It's probably my first choice. It's definitely the first one I think to use 
except in one specific case, which there's a third one for that. I'll come to that for now. With Whisper Transcription, any audio recording I've got, any video recording I've got, I can drag it into the app. I can walk away, make a cup of tea, come back and know that in a few minutes' time, every word will be transcribed. Um, it will also do live, um, so you know I can do it for calls and things. But there's an issue with that. I love it especially for dragging a video in and knowing it will be done. The subtitles for this video were done in Whisper transcription. Now, no transcription is perfect. You know that whether you do it manually or automatically or not. Sometimes when you're reading the transcript, something in there is so wrong that it's actually really confusing. And again, that's true whether it's you or it's a transcription app. But with Whisper, you can play back the audio within the app, within the transcript. So what is this bit? Click and play. When you're not clear what something should be, you just play back the audio. You listen and you hopefully figure it out. I mean, you think you would always, but some years ago now, I did this thing, I was hired to do, oh, I can't remember what the job was, all sorts of things, but I spent an hour in the middle of the job trying to catch one word in a particular recording. I mean, it was an important word. I was being paid. I promised to do it. That was key. Otherwise, I might have just fudged it a bit. And actually, this Dutch, that was, that would have been just a couple of months before I learned of any audio transcription. I wonder whether these tools, I should find that audio again and see if they catch the word. I think so. I did so many things with the audio, increasingly amplitude, all sorts of things hurt my ears listening to it. Anyway, something I don't like in Whisper transcription is that it is quite hard to find bits in the transcribed text that you want. I mean, you can search and that will find what you're looking for if it's there. But what it won't do is jump you to that section on the screen. You have to scroll down and eventually you see where Whisper transcription has highlighted the search term. If you're searching for one word, it's really easy to miss it as well. Whereas something I do like really, I don't know why I like it quite so much as I do, but I really do. The audio within Whisper Transcription is the fullest quality possible. It's not a just about audible version of the audio that you dragged in. It is the original audio dragged in. It's as clear as it can be, which is not true. I wouldn't have thought about this until you, know, you find it happens. It isn't true of the last of my three, otter.ai, but otter has advantages that mean it's no longer my main go-to transcription tool but I do keep coming back to it for a particular thing oh sorry let me say first uh, Whisper Transcription can actually be a free app but if you were to pay for it if you choose to pay a little bit you get a bigger large language module so the transcription is better why would you not want the best transcription you can get there is an annual subscription fee for Whisper but skip it I can't, I can't remember what it is now it's just not worth it Buy the thing outright for 35 whole dollars. The worth I've got out of that $35. Right then, the last one of the three transcription tools that I use over and over in every type of writing that I do, otter.ai. It's an online service and this is important. It's also an iPhone and an iPad app. So there's no Mac app. You have to use it in a browser on a Mac uh, by going to otter.ai. But it is an app on iOS and iPad OS. And otter.ai in any of these forms is exceptional. The day I found it, it was the first of all of these I found, that that day it transformed a project I was on. And from that minute, I have never again manually transcribed a single word myself. Not one. I almost miss it, but let's not get carried away. One issue, though, is if you drag an audio or a video file in and it transcribes it, well, Otter does the same thing as Whisper. It keeps the original audio for you to be able to check, but only in a really low quality version. Uh, that's to save creating big files, which actually Whisper transcription can do. And it's just meant, it's not meant to be for broadcast quality, it's just functional. You can hear it. And it is great that you can hear the audio as you're reading the transcript. Plus, actually, Sort of swings around about this one. Uh, I think Otter is much clearer uh, when you're searching and you're trying to figure out a, a bit of a transcription that you don't understand. Because as the audio is playing, Otter will highlight the text that's being spoken. So finding the thing you want in the whole transcript, it just seems easier, clearer to me than it is with Whisper transcription. Still, 
maybe I'm just a sucker for good audio quality. So when I first tried this out with Whisper and the audio quality on playback was exactly as good as the original audio recording that I dragged in. It was just, it was gorgeous. I really liked it. Otter.ai, right, is a subscription service that comes with a really, I think, quite generous free version. Used to be very generous, now quite generous. With this free version, using the apps or the online service, you can do a live transcription of conversations or calls or whatever of up to 300 minutes per month, as long as any one of those transcriptions or those conversations is no more than 30 minutes. A bit like Zoom, isn't it? The free version cut you off after a bit. And also on the free one, you can drag up to three audio or video files into it for transcription. I've been trying to find out whether Otter has a limit on the length of those audio or video files, and I can't find them, but I think there must be. If you uh, do pay for Otter, then for $17 a month, or, or actually $10 a month if you pay annually, then everything increases. You get 1,200 minutes. Uh, which can be 90 minutes per conversation, and you can drag in up to 10 files. Uh, and there is also, there's a higher range, there's a $40 a month tier, where, where the key thing is basically there's no limit at all on how many audio or video files you can drag in. What I used to do was I would pay for Otter for a month, uh, and pay for it for a month when I knew that I was going to be needing it and using it a lot, and then I'd cancel it until the next time. You have to remember to cancel it yourself. It's one of these rolling subscriptions, but you start it, you stop it, okay. That was then, what I do now is I use Whisper Transcription and Audio Hijack for almost everything. So that actually I can just use the free version of Otter for this one thing that it does that so far the rest don't. Live transcription. You know what the words mean, it's hard to explain. Okay. Sometimes, right, um, when I'm doing journalism, I'm writing about events where uh, they're online, I need to record the audio, and I could record that audio into Whisper, to Audio Hijack, but the transcription of it would not be available to me until the whole thing was over. Most of the time, fine, but quite often, every couple of months or so, there's a thing where it's going on, and I might well be charged with writing about something that's happened in the first 10 minutes of the hour, or whatever it is. So having to wait to the end of the hour, that is useless to me. Whereas Otter will transcribe live right in front of me, and I can select text and copy it out, even as it's carrying on doing the rest. Actually, what I do that, because I'm on the free one and there's a 30-minute limit, and I just told you that typical event is an hour, well, I'll start Otter on my iPhone, listening to the speakers from the Mac, and then after about 20 minutes, whenever I think about it, I'll start it on my iPad instead and switch off the iPhone back. And Yeah, I should probably just pay, shouldn't I? Really? Okay. There is one other thing about uh, Otter. As I say, it's on the iPhone and the iPad. Okay, it's an app on there. I would never use that as my sole recording when I've gone off to interview somebody. I mean, because remember the audio quality, it, it's intentionally not very good. But if I'm recording on a couple of devices, well then, why not? I could use Otter on one of them, couldn't I? Then, at the end of the interview, well, I have the advantage that I'm already transcribed. And I cannot get enough of that. I absolutely love that. There, all those hours just gone and there, yeah. Um, there is not a Whisper transcription app for the iPhone. And Audio Hijack, it's very definitely Mac only always was, I imagine it always will be. But I should say that actually there is another app that uses ChatGPT's Whisper technology. It's another app called Whisper Notes for the iPhone. And that actually, that's been recommended to me. It's just, I can't get it to play nice. I don't know why. So let me include a link to that in the description and you can have a look, see if you think it will be working better for you. It's 99 cents if you want to gamble for it. Go for broke on that one and try it out. I suspect though, actually, that the best option when you and I are recording something on our iPhones or iPads that we want to transcribe later is to, well, just record them there. You know, record them in, record the audio in uh, Apple's voice memos or an app like just press record, any audio recorder. And then later, as soon as you can, drag that audio back to your Mac. Drag the audio recording MP3 or whatever it is into Whisper transcription. I said at the start that I was scarred, I think. Transcribing by hand 
for so many years. I think you've gathered that I love this stuff. The thing is, I absolutely love interviewing. It was worth the pain of transcription. I just, I wish I'd kept all the recordings, all those hundreds of hours of recordings. I could just drag them all in. I wish I'd, if only I'd held on to them. But, um, or hold on to new ones. That's what I would do. Uh, listen, that's it for this edition of 58 Keys. I did say that there were four previous ones about transcription, but skip them. Each one gets better than the rest, as transcription gets better than the rest. Fantastic, isn't it? Thank you very much for watching. Now, take care of yourself. Write more, transcribe more, and I'll see you soon.